George Tweed could never have survived his hiding during the Japanese occupation of the island without the help of the Guamanian people. As the only remaining American left on Guam, he represented to the Chamorros the hope that one day Uncle Sam would come back to Guam. Sam, my dear Uncle Sam, won't you please come back to Guam? 8 of December 1941, people went crazy right here in Guam, oh, Mr. Sam. Sam, my dear Uncle Sam, won't you please come back to Guam? Uh, I knew the Chamorro people pretty well before I went into jungles. I know that they are generous to a fault. They give you the shirt off your back if they felt, if felt that you needed it. But uh, if you st stole something from them, oh boy, then they're mad and they're out to get your scalp, see? <laughs> well, I couldn't afford to irritate them by taking anything that belonged to them. And I was in the jungle not very long before I, I found that any edible food, especially since the Japs had taken all the food away from them, anything that was edible in a, in a jungle belonged to, to some native. And, and if I went ahead foraging for food, I'd be robbing them of their food and I'd, they'd become my enemies. So I couldn't do it. So I had to depend on them to supply me with food and they were so generous and, and uh, considerate that they no problem at all. They'd give me the shirt off their back, see? But not everyone on Guam supported the Americans. Japanese nationalists and sympathizers were given prominent positions during the occupation. Of, out of the entire Guam population, there was about a hundred, well, I'd say roughly about a hundred uh, people there who turned pro-Jap. And the rest of them uh, were, remained strongly pro-American. And uh, those that remain pro-Jap, or the term pro-Jap, it didn't take long before we, everybody learned who they were and to stay the heck out of their way. Tweed spent the first few months of hiding in the Jonia area. In recent years, he's been criticized for leaving his hiding place and showing himself in public. In our interview, for the first time ever, he admitted attending a public fiesta. Uh, when, in Jonia, when I was in Jonia, uh, th there were so many people, they'd bring so many visitors there to see me that I felt that it didn't, uh, it didn't matter so much if I did go out roaming around at night because everybody knew where I was anyway, see? And uh, now this woman that called me on the phone from Guam here a, a few days ago, she says, uh, 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 we've heard that you went out at night running all around all over, all over the island at night attending parties and all of that sort of thing. So I told her, I says, there was only one time that I ever went to a party. And uh, I said, the only reason I did then was because everybody knew where I was anyway. And uh, I says, it was, uh, the party was given by Aguada Johnston, Johnston. And uh, I said, that's the only time I says, yeah. I says, I used to go out at night and, and roam around and go here and there. From Jonia, Tweed moved on to other homes and hideouts, narrowly avoiding the Japanese. After eight months, he decided too many people knew where to find him, so he decided to take up an offer from 29-year-old Tommy Tanaka of Tamuning to stay at his house. I went to Tommy Tanaka's place because he had told me that uh, uh, he had come out there and visited me and brought food to me. And he told me that uh, any time I needed another place to go to come to his place and he would help me. Now he told me that in private, just between him and me, see. But he says, uh, if you come to my place, he says, I want only you and me to know about it. And I said, well, gee, Tommy, I says, that's the way I went one or two. I says, I don't, I don't, don't want uh, all these visitors and this publicity and so forth. So he says, okay, fine. Tanaka, now 68 years old, says he knew there would be risks involved in keeping Tweed, but he wanted to show loyalty to the United States of America by protecting the Navy sailor. I want to keep it as secret as can be because I know that I will be punished for either they'll kill me because I know it's a dangerous mission that I'm doing, but I have to do it because we love the American people, you know, we were under American flag at that time, even though my name is Japanese, but...
Tweed knew he could trust Tommy Tanaka, but could not find his house alone. So he asked to be taken to the Chamorro priest, Father Oscar Calvo. Calvo had only been ordained a priest only a few months before the start of the war by then Bishop Olano. Tweed was taken to Father Calvo's house in the middle of the night. Calvo was told someone wanted to meet him out in the jungle, but it was not told who was waiting. He welcomed me and uh, was there anything he could do to help me and all of that sort of thing. And I told him, yeah. I said, there's a man has, t has told me that I could come to his place and he would be glad to help me. But I says, I don't know how to get there. Tweed claims Monsignor Calvo betrayed his trust and told others he was going to Tommy Tanaka's house. Monsignor Calvo, now age 69, has declined to be interviewed about Tweed. While at the Tanaka home in Tamuning, Tweed caught cold and had to be nursed along. Uh, I had that pneumonia, he was coughing, and uh, we have to uh, take care of him. Uh, my wife sometimes, she had to have prepared food for him because he was sick, you know, he was coughing. So every, every day we put him out on, in the jungle to make it sure it's safe. And then in the evening we brought him where he had his dinner and... Uh, and uh, a place to, sl to sleep. But usually during daytime he was out in the jungle hiding. That's where we have to put him. That's when uh, at night time when, uh, when I go to sleep, because I sleep with him. We have two beds, there are twin beds. And uh, I uh, just keep on pitching that the, the Japanese in the window ready to uh, burn at us. And uh, Anyway, uh, I couldn't sleep well because uh, scared. I get scared. But before long, Tweed and Tanaka realized he'd have to move on. Uh, not a jungle area. See, it's like that. Well, the Gibson is not many jungle like a terrace. Uh, there is just practically you can see uh, places that uh, someone is coming. You know, it's it's not a heavily jungle. It's. Mostly like a clear land, but the trees are not too, too high or too big. So George Tweed was on the move again. After passing from one home to another, he was finally introduced to the son of a Spanish rancher, Antonio Artero. He was the first, I would say, the first man that I ever saw, that I ever met, that helped me, that could keep a secret, that did keep a secret. Now, he, he wouldn't uh, even tell his own family, his own kids. They didn't know that he was helping me all of that time. See, of course, Josefa knew it because she had to put up the food for him to bring out to me. 